to another episode of Embracing Ramadan. Finally, here in Toronto, it's a warm but a rainy day, and for the first time in many episodes, I'm not actually freezing today. And with this beautiful scenery around us, let me remind you of something. Allah reveals Himself through different three things. One being His messengers, two being the book, the holy books, and three being the book of the universe. This whole universe is a book with each verse written by Allah, and every creation shows the unity and oneness of Allah. Think about it. The one who created me, humans, has to create the rest of the universe as everything is compatible with each other. After all, the sun that doesn't uh, harm my eye also fits into the eye of a mosquito. And as Bedou Zaman, the author of Risali Inner Collection, puts it, the one who creates the eye not only sees the eye, but also should see what the eye sees. And with this beautiful season of spring approaching and coming near us, I advise that you observe the universe as well. And with Tefekir, let's make this Ramadan more fruitful more than ever. Ya Jameel, Ya Allah, Ya Qareeb, Ya Allah, Ya Mujib, Ya Allah, Ya Habib, Ya Allah, Ya Ra'uf, Ya Allah, Ya Atuf, Ya Allah, Ya Ma'roof, Ya Allah, Ya Latif, Ya Allah. يا عظيم يا الله يا حنان يا الله يا منان يا الله يا ديان يا الله يا سبحان يا الله يا أمان يا الله يا برهان يا الله يا سلطان يا الله يا مستعان يا الله يا محسن يا الله يا متعال يا الله يا رحمن يا الله يا رحيم يا الله يا كريم يا الله يا مجيد يا الله يا فرد يا الله يا ود يا الله يا أحد يا الله يا صمد يا الله يا محمود يا الله يا صادق الوعد يا الله يا علي يا الله يا غني يا الله يا شافي يا الله يا كافي يا الله يا معافي يا الله يا باقي يا الله يا هادي يا الله يا قادر يا الله يا ساتر يا الله يا قهار يا الله يا جبار يا الله يا غفار يا الله يا فتاح يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحب على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبد 
عبدتم ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورايت الناس يدخلون في دين الله افواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر انه كان توابا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا ابي لهب وتب ما اغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامراته حماله الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد صدق الله العظيم Hello everyone and welcome to the Ramadan Story Corner. And today the story I have for you is about um, the justice of Prophet David and his sensitivity to judge fairly. So um, in this story, the story that actually ha um, takes place in the Holy Quran, what happens is two brothers, they come to Prophet David and they're there to complain to him. And one of them says to Prophet David, he says, Oh David, please help us resolve our affairs because we are in conflict with each other. And David says, Okay, go on, tell me what happened. And he says, My brother here, he has 99 sheep, but I only have one. Um, and you know what he said to me? He said, Give me all of them. Give me, give me that one sheep that you have. I want to have all of them. Please help us resolve this matter. Hearing this, Prophet David, what he says is, he, he responds right away by saying, well, he has undoubtedly wronged you, and he should not be asking from you for that one sheep. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is uh, people, partners in business, they often trespass against each other's rights, except for those who believe and do good deeds, but they are very few in number. Right at that moment, though, in the Holy Quran, what happens is the passage right after explains how Prophet David goes right to prostration to his Lord and he asks for forgiveness. Now the reason he, that he does this is because he realizes that he made a judgment without asking what the other side had to say. Instead, he chose to listen to one side and made a judgment and a decree and he didn't listen to the other side. And for that reason, he asked God for forgiveness. And in response to this, God forgives him. And he says, in the Holy Quran, he says this. And this is in Surah Sa'd, verse 26. He says, O oh David, we have appointed you as a vicegerent in the land to rule according to our commandments. So judge among people with the truth and do not follow personal inclination, lest it leads you astray from the path of God. Surely those who wander astray from God's path, for them there is a severe punishment, because they have forgotten the day of reckoning. Happy Ramadan, everyone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. اللهم إني أسألك بأسمائك يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا عليم يا حليم يا عظيم يا حكيم يا قديم يا مقيم يا كريم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت 
انت الامان الامان خلصنا من النار يا سيد السادات يا مجيب الدعوات يا ولي الحسنات يا رفيع الدرجات يا عظيم البركات يا غافر الخطيئات يا دافع البليات يا سامع الأصوات يا معطي المسؤولات يا عالم السر والخفيات سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان خلصنا من النار يا خير الغافرين يا خير الناصرين يا خير الحاكمين يا خير الفاتحين يا خير الذاكرين يا خير الوارثين يا خير الحامدين يا خير الرازقين يا خير الفاصلين يا خير المحسنين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان خلصنا من النار يا من له العز والجمال يا من له الملك والجلال يا من له القدرة والكمال يا من هو الكبير المتعال يا من هو شديد المحال يا من هو شديد العقاب يا من هو سريع الحساب يا من هو عنده حسن الثواب يا من هو عنده أم الكتاب يا من هو ينشئ السحاب الثقال سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان خلصنا من النار وأسألك بأسمائك يا حنان يا منان يا ديان يا غفران يا برهان يا سلطان يا سبحان يا مستعان يا ذا المن والبيان يا ذا الأمان سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان خلصنا من النار Welcome to Speaker's Corner of Emerging Ramadan. We have created you all male and female and have made you nations and tribes so that you would come to know one another. We are joined by Mr. Habib Mehji today. He's a president of Toronto Jafiri community. Thank you very much for having us in this beautiful library, part of your facility. Thank you. This is an amazing library. It's, we call it Mullah Askar Memorial you know, Library and Resource Center. Amazing books, calligraphy, uh, model of the Kaaba, and a very quiet place for people to come visit, get spiritually energized, and spend some time here in a quiet space. As far as I see, there's a content which is about uh, the root of Prophet Abraham, right? Correct. So we have this library where we invite everyone, not only from the Muslim faith, but from uh, Christian faith, the Judaism faith, all of us can come here and feel part of this collective society that we are coming from the Abrahamic religions. So in these beautiful facilities, how do you observe the Ramadan with your community? Alhamdulillah, you know, we have a very blessed community. It's a big community. Uh, we celebrate Ramadan in different ways. Number one is, of course, we all want to be spiritually energized. Allah has given us this month to recollect and make sure that we are devoted to Him. And just keeping the fast itself is not only refraining from, from hunger and food, but trying to spiritually elevate one's status to fast with the eyes, with the ears, with the tongue, so to make sure that as we embark on our, our next 12 months, we are spiritually energized to keep our 
ethical values, moral values, as well as making sure that we eat right going forward. As a president of the community, how is your relationship with other communities? What do you do during the Ramadan? So, Alhamdulillah, we have excellent relationships with other Muslim communities, other faith-based communities, etc. So on June 2nd, for example, we will host the interfaith iftar here at our center. Uh, me and my team have gone to interfaith iftars at other places, other Muslim organizations. We, last week we had an interfaith iftar at uh, Vaughan City Hall here. We had the federal MPs and Vaughan City Regional Councillors hosting the interfaith iftar. So a good number of the Muslim communities and other faith, faith leaders came in congregation to break the fast uh, together. So I would like to ask you a specific question about, the, about your community or general Muslims uh, in Western world. Do you see any conflict between community members who would like to keep their tradition values and living in a local Western society? Do you see any big conflict? So that's a good question. We, our community, the Jaffrey community, in my community, we have people coming from uh, India, from Pakistan, from East Africa, and also some members are from the Iraqi community or Iranian community. So everybody brings their cultures back to one community. So we do see some different cultures, uh, but we gather all of them together. And to the extent we can practice our cultures, we do. However, we have to remember we are living in this part of the world. We have to respect the local Canadian and Western you know, rules as well. So we try to combine both and, come and make the best out of it. Uh, we are a very tolerant society to the extent that we can observe, absolutely, but we have to keep the local rules in mind. In general, do you think Muslim community is well integrated to society? I think we are reasonably well integrated, but we need to do much, much better. For sure, we need to go out and make sure that we are, we are represented in the society at different levels. It may be at government levels, it may be at municipal level or provincial level. We have to be out there with the community so we are well known. Now, Alhamdulillah, we do have, you may have heard about Muslim Vote. This is an entirely youth group which has started uh, encouraging Muslim communities to be engaged in the outer world, right, to make, make sure that they understand their civic responsibilities, they are out there, they understand their systems at municipal, provincial and federal level, so they can put their voices out, they can go out to vote for the, the members of parliament and provincial parliament. So, alhamdulillah, we do have now youth groups coming to encourage the Muslim community to go out and be fully engaged in the society. So I think you have big hope about next generation. As far as I see also, you have a school in here, That's which right. is Islamic school. So what's your expectation from the next generation? Alhamdulillah, I think the expectation for the children who are born here, they are first, we call them Canadian Muslims, for example, right? So they are, for example, we have a Sadiq Islamic school here, right from Casa, the Montessori program, all the way to grade 12. There are approximately more than 700 students here, right in this center. And their motto is, you know, Islamic you know, perspective, right? Uh, and alhamdulillah, we expect them. They are, have the language skills, both English and French, with Islamic, you know, uh, Arabic, as well as other Islamic cultures. So we expect them to take the leadership going forward to make sure that we are well, repre well represented in the Canadian society. The most important part of the Ramadan, which is last 10 days, is coming up. How do you get prepared for the last 10 days? So, Alhamdulillah, we have lots of programs, for example, for the last 10 days, starting from the, the breaking of the iftar, then we have special amals or duas, uh, similar to the Raviya, where we you know, take a little bit longer to, to, to all uh, you know, pray. And, and then we also serve the suhoor here at the center. Uh, and then we hope people to hopefully take some rest and, and come back again for the, for the next night. So inshallah, community is well prepared. We have got significant numbers of volunteers working day in, day out, right from the parking all the way to the kitchen, to the cleaning, etc. And of course, our scholars are ready to, to embark that spiritual knowledge to the membership. And then the membership and the participants can take and hopefully get spiritually elevated in the next uh, 10 nights, inshallah. Anything else you would like to add? And also, would you like to have any message to people around the world? Yes, I think uh, as a Muslim community, we all need to be united. Uh, we have lots of common interests. And I think we can show to the world that what we can offer, right from our heritage, our culture, our knowledge, 
Uh, and I think all we need to be is just come together and, and represent one and be one ummah inshallah for the, for the rest of the community. We talk about the community work of Jaferi community with President Habib Megji and other guests with a different topic in the shade of Ramadan. See you tomorrow. حبيب يا الله يا رؤوف يا الله يا عطوف يا الله يا معروف يا الله يا لطيف يا الله يا عظيم يا الله يا حنان يا الله يا منان يا الله يا ديان يا الله يا سبحان يا الله يا أمان يا الله يا برهان يا الله يا سلطان يا الله يا مستعان يا الله يا محسن يا الله يا متعال يا الله يا رحمن يا الله يا رحيم يا الله يا كريم يا الله يا مجيد يا الله يا فرد يا الله يا وتر يا الله يا أحد يا الله يا صمد يا الله يا محمود يا الله يا صادق الوعد يا الله يا علي يا الله يا غني يا الله يا شافي يا الله يا كافي يا الله يا معافي يا الله يا باقي يا الله يا هادي يا الله يا قادر يا الله يا ساتر يا الله يا قهار يا الله يا جبار يا الله يا غفار يا الله يا فتاح يا الله السلام عليكم this is zehan rashid back with another episode of Healthy Living on Ramadan TV International. In these next few talks, I'm going to emphasize a lot on the types of foods that we eat and the effects that these things have. Let me give you some examples, which you probably already know, but it's good to just put them in some sort of perspective. Let's take the example of the most serious diseases that we face as human beings. I think you'll all agree, heart disease, blood pressure, stroke, cancer, obesity, arthritis, even some of the conditions of the mind all appear to be now linked firmly to the type of foods that we're eating. So there are very big and very real consequences of eating foods that we do. Most of us seem to divide food into these three big macronutrients as I call it. So the carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats. And this is indeed true. The thing to remember is that not all carbohydrates and proteins are the same. I'll give you an example. The carbohydrate that comes from refined sugar, sugar, white sugar, is not the same as the carbohydrate that comes from broccoli and kale. And yet they're both carbohydrates. Similarly, proteins that are coming from wild salmon or nuts are not the same as proteins that are coming from, for example, um, highly refined gluten, uh, which is a form of wheat, which is very common in the bread and sometimes in other products. So they're both proteins, but they're not the same. And lastly, let's take an example of the fats. Now, the fats that are coming from transhydrogenated fatty acids, particularly the margarines, and especially if the margarines are actually those partly hydrogenated fats, then they are not the same as extra virgin oil, extra virgin olive oil rather, I should say. So there is a very big difference. In fact, there's a very big, if you like, a spectrum across the board where you can tell that this particular kind of food will actually be harmful 
and that particular kind of food is actually beneficial. There was a book written many years ago and if you ever have an interest in reading, please look up that book. It's called You Are What You Eat by a, a, a Scottish lady. Her name is Gillian McKeith. She wrote the book in 2004, so it's not a new book. But the book emphasizes so much on how foods can actually make you feel good or not good. How, can, how foods can make you feel tired and refreshed. How foods can affect your energy levels and how food can make you lethargic and tired. And how foods can even make you feel like happier and how foods can actually make you sad. Until the next time, I'm your host Sehan Rashid, uh, thanking you once again. Have a blessed and a great Ramadan. See you the next time. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, hayyik lana min amrina rashada. واجعل معونتك العظمى لنا سندا ولا تكلنا إلى تدبير أنفسنا فالعبد يعجز عن إصلاح ما فسد أنت العلي وقد وجهت يا أملي إلى رجائك قلبا خاشعا ويدا فللرجاء ثواب أنت تعلمه فاجعل ثوابي دوام الستر لي أبدا يا رب إن ذنوبي في الورى كثرت وليس لي عمل في الحشر ينجيني وقد أتيتك بالتوحيد يصحبه حب النبي حب النبي وهذا القدر يكفيني الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allah.
لا إله إلا هو محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد In a hadith, Prophet peace be upon him states, an hour of contemplation or intellection, tefekkur, is better than a year of supererogatory prayers. Now what is this hadith trying to tell us? That thinking is better than worship or uh, daily prayers? No. In fact, it is teaching us that an active thinking of Allah's creation is better than prayers offered in ignorance or out of habit. So with Ramadan, the month of spiritual cleansing, Let's give our thoughts fully with the help of fasting and cleansing our bodies as well. Thank you for watching another episode of Embracing Ramadan. See you tomorrow.